In this presentation, we will study one special type of counter that we call as ring counter. Ring counter is a typical application of shift register. We have not studied shift register yet, but we have knowledge of the counter. So we can move on with the ring counter in this presentation without having any prior knowledge of shift register or any other kind of register. The only change is the output of the last flip-flop is connected to the input of the first flip-flop. If I want to compare the ring counter with the shift register, there is only a single change. The change is this output Q3, that is the output of the last flip-flop, is connected to the input of the first flip-flop, that is flip-flop number 0. But in case of shift register, you will find that we don't have any feedback like this, but we have only Q3 as our output. And this is the only change that you will find and it is good that you have some knowledge of the shift registers also so that it will help you in the coming presentations there is one important point that you have to keep in your mind is the number of state in general when you have a 4-bit counter you use four flip-flops we have done the same we have a 4-bit ring counter and we have used four flip-flops and when we ask you to find out the number of states you just use 2 to the power 4 that gives you 16 and you will say we have 16 states and it will count from 0 to 15 but it is when we have a normal counter but this is a special type of counter in which you cannot find a state like this but in case of ring counter the number of state the number of states is equal to the number of flip-flops Use. This is a very very important point and uh, there are chances that you will make mistake in multiple choice questions so you have to keep this thing in your mind. The number of state is equal to number of flip flop used. So in this case we have four flip flops and thus we have four states so I think it is clear. Now we will move to the circuit and we will see how the connections are made in this. You can see clock is there and this clock is given to all the four flip-flops simultaneously at the same time that's why it is a synchronous counter and also we have used the overriding inputs the ORI is the signal that is given to the overriding inputs of the flip-flop I hope you know what is the overriding input they are preset and clear the preset PR if 0 then the output of the flip-flop Q is equal to 1 and uh, we know that it will set the flip-flop because Q is equal to 1 and when clear is equal to 0 or low the Q is equal to 0 they are very important inputs and we have already used them when we have to count up to a particular value and there is a separate presentation on this if you go to the playlist and um, search it you will find this presentation in which I have explained the preset and clear why we call them overriding why they are asynchronous I have given all the answers in that presentation there is very important point you have to remember regarding this preset and clear whenever preset is equal to 0 or clear is equal to 0 the output is going to be 1 and output is going to be 0 respectively and it doesn't look for the value of the clock or D the input whatever be the value of the clock or whatever be the value of the input whether you are using the JK T S R or D flip-flop the output is going to be 0 or 1 that's why we call them overriding input they are going to override your output so we have used the preset and clear input in a certain manner that I'm going to explain you. This ORI is an active low signal. Whenever it is low, whenever it is low like this, the clear and preset will be in action and there will be change in the circuit. For the flip-flop number 1, flip-flop number 2 and flip-flop number 3, you can see that this ORI, the overriding input, is connected to the clear is connected to the clear whereas for the first flip-flop the flip-flop number zero it is connected to the preset and let's say initially we have given the ORI the active low signal this will make the output Q1 equal to zero because clear is low and in the same way Q2 will also be zero and Q3 will be zero and uh, you can see this ORI is connected to the preset for the first flip-flop and when preset is low the output is high so Q 
0 will be 1 so this is a very important thing in the ring counter we have to get the presetted one this one I call as presetted one because we are getting it from the preset input and you will find in some time that it follows a circular path to form a ring this one that we have obtained now will follow a circular path to form a ring that's why we call it as ring counter and I'm just going to fill my table depending upon the results that we have drawn the ORI the overriding input is given it is an active low signal and the clock is don't care whatever be the value of clock it is not going to change the outputs Q0 Q1 Q2 or Q3 I have already explained this thing Q1 is 0 Q2 is 0, Q3 is 0 and as this ORI is given to the preset for the first flip flop we have Q0 as 1 so this is what we have in the first row now for the rest of the operation in this circuit we will make this ORI high this ORI will be high for the next operation so that this clear and preset will not affect the output so I will make it high the one represents it is high throughout the operation and uh, now we will move to the clock and as you can see all these four flip flops are negative edge triggered these are negative edge triggered so there will be a change in the circuit or the D flip flop whenever we have a falling edge so let's see what we have for the first falling edge I will change the color for this process so that we can differentiate for the first falling edge you can see this zero is acting as the input to the first flip-flop which means that the data input d0 is equal to zero I will first find out the input to the four flip-flops then we will evaluate the output depending upon the two table of d flip-flop and I have just found out d0 is equal to zero in the same way d1 is equal to one because you can see q0 is equal to one and they are connected and d2 is equal to 0 d3 is equal to 0 now we have the input to the four flip-flops and we can easily find out the output because we have the falling edge and there is a change in the circuit the flip-flop is operational and when the input is equal to 0 we already know the output is also 0 so the output is 0 now q0 is 0 and when the input is 1 the output is 1 so q1 will now become 1 and uh, in the same way when input is 0 output is also 0 and in the same way q3 is 0 so we have our new outputs that you can see is 0 1 0 0 and previous was 1 0 0 0 so we have 0 1 0 0 this is for the first falling edge in the same way we will do the analysis of the second falling edge quickly and uh, we will try to find out the input first here we are having 0 so d0 is 0 again this is 0 so d1 is 0 this is 1 so d2 is 1 this is 0 so d3 is 0 we have our inputs this brown one is the input now this purple one is the input for the previous falling edge and now we have the input as 0 for the first flip-flop so again the output will be 0 and the output is 0 for the second flip-flop also flip-flop number 1 because input is 0 and now the output of the flip-flop number 3 that is flip-flop 2 is 1 because input is 1 and the output of last flip-flop is 0 so we have 0 0 1 0 so we have 0 0 1 0 in the same way if you do the analysis for this third falling edge you will find the output as 0 0 0 1 and again 1 0 0 0 now let's see what is happening in this table we have to see the one I will shade down the one and then I will tell you how it is moving you can see we have the presetted one this one is presetted one presetted one because we got it from the preset input and for the first falling edge it has traveled here then again here then here and then 
here and uh, you can see that it is making a ring that's why we call it as the ring counter you will have a better feeling when you understand it by using the waveform so we are going to draw the waveform for it and this is the last part of this presentation this one is the clock and ORI is the overriding input I have made the overriding input low initially that I have already explained and after that I have made the ORI high throughout you can compare it in this table it is a low initially and then we have it as 1 so I have represented the same thing in the waveform and now we will find out Q0 Q0 and initially you can see when the ORI is low the Q0 is 1 because of the preset input so the Q0 as soon as the ORI hits the Q0 will go high and it will remain high till the falling edge we have to do the change for every falling edge okay and it is it is high initially and then it will go low okay and if I talk about Q1 then it was high initially and because of this ORI the clear is low and Q1 will go low till the first falling edge now this one the presetted one is traveled and Q1 is high so we have Q1 as 1 and now we will draw Q2 and Q3 Q2 was high and then it will also go low because of the clear input and it will remain low in the same way Q3 was high but because of clear input it will also go low now we will analyze the second falling edge for the second falling edge you can see Q0 is low so I will make it low you can see Q0 is low and also Q1 will go low it was high but now it will go low and Q2 will go high you can compare it from the table Q2 is now high and Q3 is still low okay and for the third falling edge Q0 is low Q1 is also low and Q2 will also go low and now we have Q3 as high and finally we will analyze for this falling edge and you will find that Q0 is high again from here you can see Q0 is high again and rest of the outputs Q1, Q2 and Q3 is low now we will see how our one is traveling quickly this is one 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 and one you can see it is making a ring we are starting from q0 remember this thing we are now on q1 then q2 then q3 and back to q0 so we are starting from q0 going to q1 then q2 q3 and again q0 so it is making a ring and this one is the presetted one it's very simple topic to understand and it's very important at the same time this waveforms clearly show that the presetted one shifts one bit per clock cycle and forms a ring hence the name is ring counter and if you talk about the application of the ring counter then ring counters are used in those applications in which several operations are to be sequently controlled we have to control sequentially the several operations we have to use the ring counter for example in resistance welding the operations called squeeze hold weld and off are to be performed sequentially so we can use it there if you want a separate presentation on the application of the ring counter you can comment in the comment section I'll try to make one and I think this is over now we have completed the ring counter and it will be a very important topic for you you in the exam so please practice it well this is all for this presentation in the next presentation we will discuss Johnson ring counter